Welcome to Bowser Training Lead Coder Solution. If you want the best mock interview experience in North America, feel free to check us out at bowsertraining.org. We are here to help you land your next big offer. And also, I think uh, just note that we do have an English version of the website, so um, roughly translate everything into English, so it should be good. Okay, so today we are actually not going to talk about the lead code solution. We're going to talk about the system design uh, interview question, which is uh, how to design a simple Twitter search system or whatever kind of, a, you know, naive search system. Definitely not like a Google, but Google study like this, right? Uh, simple. Um, okay, so first of all, whenever we do uh, have a link here, so whenever we do any kind of system design interview questions, just keep in mind to follow this read my friend methodology, uh, which stands for requirement, estimation, uh, architecture, details, miscellaneous, and the future. So for, for this design, a simple Twitter search system. So the rough requirement is, you know, giving you some kind of uh, somebody post, lots of users post uh, Twitter uh, tweets, and uh, essentially we're going to tokenize tokenize the text and then we can search something like a hey, uh, this tweet has let's say black and the life or has something different um, basically is a, is a inclusive and also there's a, a union kind of thing so the api can roughly looks like this you know dev key search terms whenever you do this kind of search things or bulk return results uh, you should think about the paging which is essentially you will have like a size and a page size and also a page token and also sort as a follow-up is, you know, we can just sort based on the published time in descending order. Also, we can sort by different other criteria. For example, uh, whenever you return those tweets, just give me the most uh, commented tweets first in descending order, those kind of things as a follow-up. So that's the first step, requirements, and then we move on to the estimation. So we quickly estimate, oh, okay, you know, whenever you are doing search, you, you're gonna have data, so you have to store the data, so what's the rough data storage estimation? So assuming Twitter has like 1 billion users, 50% of them post a tweet per day. So this is a basically rough estimation. So we need a, essentially 150 gigabytes of data per day. So this basically is the core storage. And also I would just uh, like to separate out, you know, the main storage and the ELK storage, because this basically you store the data in different ways. So this could be a, let's say NoSQL, you know, DynamoDB kind of thing, depending on your query pattern. This could, this is purely just for your elastic search cluster. Uh, storage is cheap you know, in modern days and also you can always archive your hot data to to be archived to be code um, roughly qps query per second so the right one roughly is like 6k and then let's say the query one is uh, three times more than this is like uh, 18k which is fairly small like a uh, right qps we never really worried about because we can always deal with them asynchronously and then the read one is uh as long as we have enough boxes and uh, we put the data in memory, so all sorts of kind of a caching uh, technology we can use. Um, you know, whenever we talk about caching, you, you, uh, please refer to the previous uh, kind of just searching this blog with the system design interview. We do have uh, basically ways how do we, um, let's say, remove those hot partitions or uh, like just a hot key issue. Essentially, just like a consistent hashing by adding more, by adding more uh, capacity. And now after that, we'll just move on to the architecture level. So essentially we have three layers, presentation layer, service layer, and a storage layer. So each of the clients, you can follow the colors, right? You can write tweets, load balancer. This is our like a tweet service gateway. Um, so and then for example, they will store the data in the main data storage, and then they can put it into the timeline service or whatever other services. It's just a, another kind of asynchronous, maybe it's through message passing or through RPC call is, uh, you know, just say, hey, index, tell the index server to index this tweet. Um, this could also be another way, right? So it could be after you write to your, depending on how real time you want, it could also be after you write to your main tweet storage and then you can ingest this index, index service could through like a message passing ingest from this uh, main storage and then uh, put it into their own uh, kind of storage. Um, so this is more like an inverted index kind of thing. And then whenever you search, so you go through the load balancer, you go through this tweet service, it will hit your index servi service. Hopefully there will be lots of uh, caching, in-memory caching on top of this so that you don't need to hit your disk and then you will return your results. 
So now let's uh, talk a little bit about more details, like how do you actually build the index server? So a few key terminologies. First is Lucene. So if you haven't heard about Lucene, then you need to uh, click this link and then learn more about Lucene. So Lucene is actually a pretty uh, mature technology, which is uh, the engineering for Lucene is really kind of uh, top notch. It's one of the earliest Apache uh, open source project. I think it's maybe through like 2000 or something when I was undergrad that's in early 2000, uh, definitely heard about Lucene. So you can quickly try the latest demo. So I, I just quickly tried this demo. So all you need to do is essentially download this and then you set your uh, class path. Uh, just make sure all of those charts are there. And then what you, what you can do, I, I run this before, but I removed my index folder. So what you can do is you can Let's say I want to index my uh, DynamoDB, like local test, whatever. So this is basically losing this program is indexing this. So this program you can see is in the demo. The file is uh, uh, here. And those are the two files. You can kind of quickly see. So this is the index files. So you now you can see the program. Essentially, they have, a, by the way, losing is written in Java, as you can tell. So it's like, a, you know, open this file directory and then start it indexing so after it index as you can see so there will be an index folder so you can see the index folder there they have a bunch of files so they have the segment file and they have those like compacted kind of files so you have a lock um, and then after that if you want to play it out you can essentially search so let's say i want to search arbitrary thing nothing uh, and definitely think so this is a dynamo is there going to be dynamo huh? No? That was interesting. So how about uh, license? Okay, there's a lot of license in this file, right? So if you open any of those files, you can see um, log4j. Anyways, this is just a, feel free to play around with it so that you know how, then, how Lucene works. But Lucene on a very high level is just using inverted index, which I also linked here. So very simple idea. Um, I'll also touch upon what is the inverted index just a uh, super quick later. Um, another basically uh, Lucene inverted index and also another thing is what is elastic search. So elastic search essentially, if you think about Lucene is like, you know, this Java command line or whatever running on one machine. So elastic search essentially is like making a distributed system on top of Lucene. So uh, it builds like very robust uh, kind of RESTful APIs. Uh, if you take a quick look here, close this, this, this. That is also Lucene. So if you look at the the latest uh, kind of like uh, Elasticsearch 7.8 API, so they have a bunch of APIs. So let's say you can query something, you can set up Elasticsearch index module. What are index? They just uh, they they can also do a, a data analysis actually index sorting so this is basically when creating a new index it's possible to figure how the segments inside it so basically remember the segment file I think it's something like this you can put a Twitter uh, SQL access query query and filter context compound queries so you can basically run lots of different kind of queries must they have their own query language. Uh, where is the normal? Oh, REST APIs. Let's take a look at here. So API conversions. So index API. Let's see what are the index APIs. Create an index. Oh, you just create an index to add a new index to the cluster, I guess. Um, let's just look at another one. Search APIs. Let's just say search. Oh get search post the search anyways so um this is what essentially what elastic search is doing so it builds a wrapper on top of lucene uh, which is which lucene uses inverted index and then uh they, they basically make a distribution system so that it has replicas you know load balancing and everything um and also you also hear this term a lot called the ELK, like a elk, not the, the, the moose elk, but just the Elasticsearch plus Kibana uh, stack. Uh, I think 
lots of companies are actually using this stack. It's a very common stack. Uh, Kibana, nothing fancy. It's literally just a uh, just a UI on top of all the things you search. So see, there's actually Elasticsearch plus Kibana. Re visualize, navigate, share. And I think they also, nowadays, Elasticsearch is becoming more powerful that you can do machine learning. You can basically do more like a data analysis. Kind of like, oh, I, I know I know all the all the inputs, the data you have, and then I can search. And then I can also do some kind of a data analysis. Like Reddit is doing a similar thing. As long as you have data, you pretty much own a lot. You can do lots of things. So this is a, roughly the dashboard looks like. Well, this is a very new compared to what we use. Um, but anyways, uh, this is uh, that. Take some time to read that. Actually, one thing I want to maybe go through super quick is uh, this deck. So I also have the links uh, links there. So what is Lucene? So what is Elasticsearch? So Elasticsearch Elastic is just a wrapper around it, which provides scalability, durable, RESTful APIs. Well said. So those are some APIs, API APIs. How does that look like? So this is a Elasticsearch cluster. Each of each one of them has a node, right? So the cluster has a node. And then each node is like you have a Lucene, literally is your core. You have transaction logs, you can ingest from this log and then you build the rest of APIs. And then this forms a cluster so that, you know, they carry redundant data replicas so that uh, it is fault tolerant. All nodes are of the node, so this is a fine shards. So essentially, uh, Elasticsearch also follows shards, right? So there, there are two ways they can actually shard. Uh, I, actually, I'm not quite sure which way they use, but in general, this is also true for us, right? So how you shard. So just think about our tweets example. Elasticsearch, nothing fancy. So each tweet is one object or one document. You tokenize the tweet into different words. You can either shard by the tweet object, which means you will have, you will have words, same words, in different kind of nodes. Now, whenever you do search, you have to touch all the nodes, and then you, you, you have to basically rank from those words. Another way is you shard by word. So as long as you have, let's say, uh, Black Life, Lives Matter, you have three words, and then each word is always in one shard. So basically, always goes into one shard, but document is, is basically uh, in different places, which is fine. It's really depending on your usage pattern. Um, if you have like a, if you shard by words, you might hit into the, hot petition of maybe one word people always search like black lives matter blm blm and then you have a hot petition which is also fine you can add more machines use consistent hashing to 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 accomplish that overcome that so you have replicas so each node will be basically be a primary of certain data and then there will be a replica of different data and whenever you write you have to vote and those whole kind of distributed systems knowledge will kick in how does the read looks like yeah you read from you will have a coordinate node, and then I think here request rather than a shard combine the result. This is they pretty much I think they shard by document, which they shard by tweets instead of words, so that you have to touch every single every single one. What if something goes wrong? So you can read through those. Essentially, it's like a, you know you have a, a winner of the, the most recent data. So this is talk about the, each loose thing, right? So you have a character filters, tokenizer, tokenized filters, file storage, how is the write per, performed? Well, essentially just like reverted index, inverted index. But they do, I think uh, loose thing did a lot of like optimization because they want to minimize the disk size and then hopefully it can fit everything into memory. Um, you know, lots of like uh, optimization, but you can just remember, we can just remember, oh, it's inverted index. I mean, they have different segments, which is different index, and then they will merge index. So remember the segment, what is the segment? The segment is actually like, like one index file we have, which is, uh, which is this file, segment one. It's kind of a hash. Um, Binary. Yeah, they will merge those kind of indexes. I think in this way, maybe Lucene is also not sharding by words. I think they they divided different segments. It's like a, it is like a different kind of nodes, um, and then each document is basically in different kind of segments. And every time they will just combine those segments. Uh, if if you can do everything in memory, try to do it in memory, or else performance will be horrible. I think. Uh, formats they definitely use different kind of file file formats to save space and the lookup speed 
Uh, it will get very complicated unless you're working on, unless you're on infrastructure team. But with this kind of understanding as a product team, I think uh, you know, if you're building products, it should be enough uh, versus just treat it as a black box. I think at least you know the underlying data structure is inverted index, uh, inverted index, not like kind of trees or whatever. Oh, but also uh, I should take that back. I think it depends on your index, right? So I, I might say, you use reverted and inverted index for certain things, but just remember we are doing this kind of like a rough word matching, right? So let's say we do black, we cannot even find a word. Let's say, let's say, uh, A C K, right? So because we we have to do the full word matching, you might do other tricks, or you, if you want to search geo data like a geo fast kind of thing, you have to do maybe like a k dimensional tree. So it depends on how you build your index. It, it, it's not necessarily. Um, just like this kind of a word thing. So you depends on how you do your index, essentially. Uh, yeah, for the follow-up question, we just need to build another index. One way to do this is we just literally, uh, let's say we follow, we um, we just fan out and fetch all the tweets, um, whatever the tweets we have right now based on timestamp. And then within that timestamp, we sort for the most common one, but this is only local optimal. It's never the global optimal. So if you want to have the global optimal, depends on your product requirement as well. If you want to have the global optimal, then you have to kind of keep maintaining a separate index. And then, you know, it could be through an automated job every like five minutes, 10 minutes, depending on how quickly you want to be. And then you boom, update all the index so that you can have the best performance during the search part. Um, I will, I have all the links below. And then this is actually a question from the Grokin, the system design interview. So uh, I'll also list it here. So feel free to leave any comments um, either on the blog or on the YouTube video to, if you have any questions. Um, I think I will cover more design in the future um, because I think our audience are kind of like need more uh, on the design part because the lead code right now is everywhere. Um, cool. All right. Uh, until then, I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.